So as the club rugby season reaches a finale, players are not just playing for trophies, they're also playing for potential international recognition. And with those test matches coming up in July, I'm going to be looking country by country at which players have earned a shot to play at the very top level. Starting with England, I've got six players that if I were Steve Borthwick, I would be taking with me on the plane for two massive test matches they've got against the All Blacks. They're also heading to Japan for a first ever test match in Japan between England and Japan. So who has earned that spot? I'll tell you what I will do. It's really easy to say, oh, this player deserves to be in, this player deserves to be in. One thing people don't do is tell you who they would drop. You can't take everyone. So I'll tell you who I would pick and who I would be replacing them for. Your thoughts on the comments down below, like I say. And I've already given away the first one with the thumbnail of this video. It's uh, Harlequins, young loose head prop, Finn Baxter. 22 years young. I mean, he doesn't actually look 22. Look at him. He's like a, he's like, he looks like a giant baby. But I'll tell you what, he gave a manly performance, a man of the match performance when Harlequins played recently away in Bordeaux in the Champions Cup quarter final. What a stage to properly announce yourself. He's had some great performances, but starting ahead of Joe Marler in that match, playing against Ben Tamifuna, Big Ben, all 150 kilos of him, and absolutely bullying him for the match. It was a coming of age performance, and I think he has to be in the reckoning with England. And who would I replace him for? Well, I've already mentioned him, Joe Marler. I love Joe Marler. He retires at the end of next season. And I could understand two chains of thought with that. On the one hand, I could understand you go, play Joe Marler while we've got him, because he's one of the best loose heads in the world. On the flip side, he's not going to be there for the next World Cup. And we need to get some game time into these young guys. And actually, I don't think Finn Baxter will necessarily start for England in the test matches in July. But I would want to take him along and involve him in the setup. You've got Ellis Genge, who's experienced. Beno Abano needs game time. That is a guy that has to start getting some games under his belt. And um, I think Joe Marler, I would leave him at home for that reason. Whilst I also recognise Joe Marler is a fabulous player. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. My second player. On the other side of the scrum, Trevor Davison. Not a young guy. He's 31 years of age. He actually has two caps to his name. He got those in 2021. Um, uh, he's been really good every time I've seen him for, for Northampton. They're, Northampton were always a team that played great attacking rugby, but they couldn't rely on their fundamentals. And Trevor Davis has been a big part of them looking much more robust up front. 31 years of age is a really good age for a prop. Who would I replace him for? Dan Cole. For the same reason as Joe Marler. Dan Cole will not be there at the next World Cup. I love Dan Cole. And England have had to keep going back to Dan Cole because there haven't been better options. I think it's now time that we've got to invest some time in these guys that, that can do a job. You've got Will Stewart in the squad already. I think Trevor Davison is a handy player. There's another young guy as well, uh, Afalabi Fasogbon uh, at Gloucester, formerly of London Irish, who, who went bust. He looks like a potential world-class talent. Watch out for him in the next coming couple of years. But for now, personally... Trevor Davison would be the man for me. Tell me if you disagree in the comments below. And uh, completing, I mean, three of my six players come in the front row. And the third one at hooker, Curtis Langdon, has been fantastic this season for Northampton Saints. He's 26. Again, just like Trevor Davison, he got two caps back in 2021. Hasn't been used since. He's played for so many clubs. He was at Montpellier. He was at Worcester when they went bust. He was at, he was at Sale didn't really get played much there. He was at London Irish, didn't really get played much there. He's now the main man at Northampton Saints, top of the table, and he is playing brilliant rugby. And Jamie George and Theo Dan are the two guys, um, one and two in the England squad currently. Luke Cowan Dickey, he might be the man that misses out. I wouldn't actually be disappointed if Luke Cowan Dickey stays as the third hooker. I think Curtis Langdon, Langdon offers a little bit of something though. So personally, I'd be going for him. Ted Hill. I am a massive Ted Hill fan. Absolutely love this guy. He is just a defensive animal. He's had horrible injuries, and I think that's why we haven't seen him in contention for the last few years, but he is just a specimen. Six foot five. He can shift, and he's got a massive engine. I, I don't like making this comparison because it, it's like heaping pressure on a guy. He's got Peter Steftatoy vibes about him. 
Now, he's, he's, no, he's nothing like the player Peter Steftatoy is. He, Peter Steftatoy is one of the greatest players ever. Ted Hill just has a little something about him that, that gives me that feeling. He just whacks people, and uh, I love to see it. And I, I think it's time. It's time for Ted Hill. He's a ripe age, 25. Get him in the squad. I'm not saying he starts. Just get him in the squad, because I think he's a potential difference, difference maker in the years ahead. Who does he come in for? Well... Tom Pearson, I'm a massive Tom Pearson fan, and I think he's going to have his day, but he's had an injury-blighted season, hasn't really established himself as a result. He's had brief opportunities with England. We'll see Tom Pearson again in an England shirt, but maybe if you had to have someone making way, it's him, or possibly Nick Azikwe. Because the thing about Ted Hill, he's such a good line-out option that if Ted Hill were playing on the blind side flank, I think you might be able to do something like put Chandler Cunningham South at second row or at least have him as, as a potential second row option so I think Ted Hill offers you a bit of versatility and if you were looking at other back row players if you were going to going to have two players making way then Alfie Barbary Will Evans has been brilliant for Quinns as well just I'm not these aren't my official suggestions just chucking another couple of names in let me know if you think about them in the comments and um, two more Harry Randall at scrum half I love Harry Randall again like Curtis Langdon, like Trevor Davison, he's got two caps for England, but it's been a few years since he earned his last one. He was actually called up during the Six Nations earlier this year when Alex Mitchell was injured, but didn't get a look in in the team. Hopefully that means Harry Randall is the next cab off the rank. I'd like to see now with the retirement of Danny Kerr, Harry Randall step up. He's been electric for Bristol, real live wire of a scrum half. And now that England are playing a more attacking style of rugby, I'd hope that Steve Borthwick will go for Harry Randall rather than Jack Van Portvliet, who was really unlucky to miss out on the World Cup due to injury. He's a good player as well. Personally, i go Harry Randall. Tell me what you think. And my final name then, this, the sixth and final name, Caden Murley. I just have so much time for Caden Murley. He's just a, a ball of energy, ball of muscle. He's got that knack of finishing. Just things happen when Caden Murley is on the field. If I had to liken him to another England player in recent years, it would be Jack Knoll. He just gets his hands on the ball and makes things happen. And he's been around, not far off the England squad for a couple of years now. He was in the Six Nations squad in 2023, but didn't get a cap. I think it's time. He's been overtaken by Tom Roebuck, by Emmanuel Faye Waboso. Personally, if it were me going on the summer, uh, the, the tour to New Zealand, I would put Caden Murley above Tom Roebuck. But Tom Roebuck's a good player as well. Some would say, and I could see the logic of taking him instead of Elliot Daly, again, because of the age profile thing. Personally, I'd have Caden Murley above Tom Roebuck, but uh, I would be interested to know what you think. And that is my thoughts. My six players that England need to take to Japan and New Zealand. Who have I missed? What players are you sticking up for? Uh, what have I got wrong? Comments down below. Give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I would love it if I would earn your subscription. I'll be doing the other countries coming up soon, so you can you can tell me the players for your country that I should be watching out for as well, and they may feature on future videos. I'll see you on the next one.